If you want to see more of my whole journey on a motorbike in Africa, please share and subscribe for the next episodes. It's a lot of editing work and I need at least a thousand subscribers so I can release a new video every week. If you have any questions about my trip, please leave a comment below. Tanzania will be the toughest and most difficult country of my journey, and along with Botswana the wildest. Since I would go through the most remote parts away from any attraction to visit, I opted to load Froga into a truck, and for a seven-day transit visa to cross a country almost the size of Germany and France combined. <laughs> The images you are watching of my entire trip through Africa were stabilized by a gimbal, but as a reference take the cracks on the glass to get an idea of the potholes and bumps that we sometimes had sitting in the truck. To the point that a couple of times my head crashed against the ceiling of the cabin. And of course riding over any of those potholes at a certain speed with the motorbike would have meant flying away with it. Tanzania and Mozambique have the worst roads of East Africa as other travelers and internet forums warned, and on the other hand I was also aware that as I traveled southwards I would have to come across the rainy season that moves up north and that I already started having the last days in Rwanda. The objective was to cross the territory and the rain front as quickly as possible, an adventurer has to adapt to the situation, not be a masochist. Going through clouds of dust was the daily routine all over Africa and the dust you swallow on a motorbike can't be imagined by anyone. The driver is the brother of the actual driver of the truck, and obviously he does not have a driving license. One can only imagine how many unlicensed drivers there are all over Africa. Apart from this, accidents were still the order of the day, both because of the road and the vehicle's conditions. When the rain came I was happy to be in a warm and dry place as I moved forward. That was the idea of getting on a truck. But the paths one third of the way separated and I continued with Froga to the south. While planning the trip no one could guess that what appears on the maps as roads are nothing more than dirt roads, and the villages would be nothing more than a few houses on either side of the crossing point. Here at least I was lucky enough to find a guest house to stay overnight. Electricity was only available for a few hours a day until 7 or 8 in the evening, and for the toilet and showering whatever you could manage with a bucket of water. The next day was one of the most dangerous and hardest parts of my journey, 172 kilometers that would take about 6 hours of potholes bumps and vibrations. Each of those potholes and bumps could mean a fall, or the bike stuck in the mud or broken down, and that was the last place you wanted that to happen. It has to be understood that along the roads in Africa there is always some sign of human presence. A lost farmhouse, 
an abandoned hut or someone on a bicycle who gives you a hand if needed. But here in the next 80 kilometers there would be nothing at all, and that was as strange as it was overwhelming. Before starting the journey, many people already warned me to be extremely careful because I would cross a very dangerous national park, which crosses a forest and where only wild beasts live, among which there are lions. Although I was exhausted, thirsty to dead, pouring sweat and needing to pee, as a precaution this was the only stop I made in those six hours. What caught my attention the most was the veracity with which the horseflies hurled themselves at my eyes or any uncovered part of my skin. As you can see the vegetation here is perfect for a lion ambush. After such a lonely journey I finally found some signs of human activity. In this case gold diggers holes. As you can see it seems that the excavated tunnels are quite deep underground. Here people simply camp and start digging for gold, and as you can imagine there are all sorts of characters. From families with children to brothels, bars and water carriers that bring you water from several kilometers uphill. We are in the village of Kitunda where I stopped for a moment to pause and found this school where there are about 400 students. The ground is dirt but at least they have something. This is the time of the lunch break although some take the opportunity to play football. This is the first time these children have seen a foreigner, so some are a little excited and scared. This is the triple structure typical of a house in the African countryside, the main house with the kitchen and bathroom outside. And after washing some underwear now it's time to take a shower with river water, as you can see it has its bugs included, everything goes straight to the bucket. For those who wonder how I used to fill up Froger, this is the answer. Along the way in some villages I came across performances held for no special reason. It was just a community activity with the sole purpose of maintaining tradition, as I was told. My day continued with what would be the longest day of my entire journey, part of which were 225 kilometers of mud sand and stones that would take 8 hours. In some places I would have to go almost walking at 5 kilometers per hour. Although it wasn't as scary as the day before, it was no less dangerous, I ran into a family of elephants, and no matter how big they are, behind the bushes you don't see them until suddenly they're right next to you, and when you're alone with a motorbike half stuck in the mud, I can assure you it scares the shit out of you. The accumulated fatigue made a dent in me, on the same day I had the only fall of the trip and hours later I had the only accident when a truck again took me off the road, but this time also falling with the bike and burning my right leg. The happiest moment, without a doubt, came when I left the dirt road behind and move onto the asphalt. The day was not going to end so easily as a storm broke to finish off the last kilometers, although I was able to shelter in time. With the images stabilized everything looks very smooth, but here's an example of how it really felt to ride a motorcycle. Every time I got off the bike my hands were shaking as if I had Parkinson, and I had to make a break every hour or so because the coccyx butts and spine were in pain.